Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy another Monday to you. It is nearly the start of, maybe when you listen to this, it will be the start of April. Man, I can't believe how, to, how fast time is going, honestly. I'm like, man, my birthday is this month, I'm another year older. <sighs> Life, what do you do? Turn 28, how exciting for me. Some of you are like, oh, you're still young. I'm like, then when I talk to other people in their early 20s, and there's some of the things they say, and I don't understand it anymore, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm getting older. But we're not here to talk about me getting older and being sad. We are here to talk about uh, adherence and why adherence matters most. And like, I really, really want to push on this uh, subject today because uh, a, a client messaged me, and she wanted, she's like, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the program that you've given me. Uh, I really appreciate you making the adjustments that you needed to make so I'm able to enjoy it. And you know, just doing some small little things here and there have made me enjoy my programming so much. The coach that I used to have, you know, they'd make me do things that I just really didn't enjoy and I, I resented going to the gym. And now I feel so much better for it. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, look, no worries. Like, you know, I was happy, obviously. And then I just kind of like took a step back and I was like, it doesn't take a lot of effort to be a fucking good coach. Like, I reply to my clients in a timely manner and I give them things that they can stick to and they enjoy. And by like those two things alone, clients think I'm the best. And I'm like, well, fuck, that's an easy barrier to entry. You know, reply to clients and give them things they enjoy so they can stick to it. That's the criteria of being a good coach. And it's like, how do other coaches miss this shit, you know? And it's because, just because you love exercise, just because you lost weight, just because whatever, doesn't mean you can fucking be a coach, right? And it's plain and simple to see. The coaches that just basically train their clients, like copy-paste versions of themselves, do not know how to coach. Because if you did, you wouldn't be doing giving clients the exact same things you would be doing, okay? I do boxing twice a week. I do the assault bike five times a week. I train five times a week in the gym. Imagine me pushing that onto all my clients. You better fucking buy, buy an assault bike. If you're going to sign up with me, you better have the money for, to buy an assault bike. You know, you better find a boxing coach. You better be able to show up to the gym five days a week. Like, okay, zero people fucking signing up with me or making everyone feel like shit because they have these expectations that I talked about in another video. You know, you have these expectations that you need to be doing all these certain things when it doesn't fit within your lifestyle. Yet, oh, just because I can do it, I did it this way. I'm going to coach everyone to do it this way. No. This is why, unfortunately, like, you know, a lot of people hate it that I say it, but it's like not everyone can fucking be a coach, you know? Go do something else. There's nothing wrong. Just because you love the gym, just because the gym is your hobby does not mean it enables you to be a coach, okay? A good coach requires a lot more than fucking just knowing how to train or understanding a little bit of food, right? And in saying this, like, again, this comes down to adherence. So if this client or any client messaged me and they're like, hey, I can't do this or, you know, I can only go to the gym this amount of time or I don't really like doing this exercise, um, you know, what am I supposed to do? If I just said, well, fucking put up with it, you know, I put this in here, do it. Do you think they're actually going to enjoy exercise? Do you think they're going to want to stick to it long term? No. And like, this is where it comes back to like goals, okay? Like, uh, yeah, adherence, but also like my goals as a coach is to empower people and to like you know show them they can get results by doing the good enough principle, but also like doing things that they enjoy for the most part. Now, obviously, you got to be a little bit uncomfortable with certain things you do, you know, but to a degree, okay. Like if a client says, "Oh man, I'm dreading leg day. I just hate that you give me so many compound exercises. They're really hard." You know, I hate being able to, like, I'm exhausted from work. I've then got to get the courage to then do an hour of doing all these hard exercises. And if they're skipping that day or they're, res you know, just dreading it and they don't want to do it, and it's like, oh, yeah, but this is going to grow your legs. Well, fuck, there are a hundred different ways someone can grow their legs by not requiring that amount of effort and by actually enjoying it and going to it. Because adherence, like if I'm like, hey, here's the perfect program, you know, oh, this is what you're going to do. You want to grow your glutes? Well, you better train three days a week with your glutes. You better do these compound exercises. Oh, your gym doesn't have this machine? Go to another gym and go and do this, right? Whatever it's going to be. The fucking adherence is going to be shithouse. And guess what? It doesn't matter if it's an optimal program. If they can't stick to it, then what's the point? That's not optimal at all. That's anti-optimal more than anything, you know? That's fucking shit. And so this is why... 
when it comes to choosing exercise modalities, when it comes, like, it goes back to the good enough of training side of things. When it comes to choosing anything, adherence is the key. This doesn't just go for those of you who are coaches listening to this. And like, again, if you're guilty of this, just change it, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with you being like, oh yeah, okay, maybe I should be listening to my clients a bit more. When I was younger, I used to fucking make them do things because I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, this will ruin them. Like, you know, oh, this will really fuck their legs up. And just because the like we enjoy the gym, okay? We like pushing ourselves. We like going harder. And yes, you do have to have progressive overload and things like that. But there's a difference between like, yeah, I fucking love the pain. I love eking out every single last rep, hype myself up for a heavy leg day, all these things. Like, you know, if you're someone like that, then that's great. This is the reason that we also want to be fucking PTs, right? This is the reason we are invested in the gym. There's a reason that we show up every day because we actually like that mental push. Newsflash, those of you who aren't coaches, okay, the people who have fucking normal lives, they've got a lot of pain going on in life already, you know, a fucking hectic job, looking after your kids, if you got kids, you know, your, your husband, your wife, whatever it's going to be, like, you fucking fly out all the time, and for me to be like, okay, I expect you to rock up to the gym and give it a fucking 10 out of 10 effort every time you're in, I expect you to always be hitting PBs, I expect you to do all these things, it's not realistic, You've got to actually take that into account, you know? Your clients are not you. My client is not me. I don't expect them to fucking do cardio every single day because I like to do cardio and also do weight training. Your ex- the, uh, to help someone become successful with their health and fitness requires you to figure out where they are in their lifestyle and giving them the correct advice based on themselves, not on you, all right? Do not fucking copy and paste yourself onto people. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. And like the biggest thing is like, okay, I don't care what someone has achieves in 12 weeks. Show me what someone's achieved in 12 months later or 24 months later. Like, have you made your client so successful that they are still exercising? They are still eating better. They are still doing these things down the path. Because if they haven't, it may be their fault to a degree. They may not have applied whatever you're teaching. But also it's good to reflect on your teaching methods. Like, are you setting these people up for success? Again, if someone's telling me I dread going to the gym and I hate this day you've given me and I'm like, ha, 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 yeah, just making you fucking work and internally they're like, I fucking hate the gym. I don't want to go. I'm going to skip it. Well, then my goal to help someone become healthier and fitter is failing, you know? To improve their health by making them hate something that's going to improve their health is failing. Plain and simple. So that's not good coaching right? Which is why I listen to what clients want. I had another client, like I didn't realize I was giving some clients uh, certain exercises, only one client that I found out about and she wasn't doing them, but she didn't tell me. And then eventually she's like, hey, Tice, I don't like some of these exercises. I've been skipping them. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, well, you put them in there. And I'm like, yeah, but if you told me, I would have changed them earlier. And as soon as she told me, I changed them out straight away. And she's like, okay, I'll stick to this. She's like, I just want to do simple stuff. I just like doing machines. You know, I like to go in there and do this. I'll do certain exercises, but I just feel like a dickhead if I'm doing some of them. I'm like, okay, that's no dramas at all. I'm like, oh, okay. This actually makes it easier for me to program because like basic exercises fucking work anyways. Gave her some machine stuff. Guess what? She hasn't missed a fucking session because she's enjoying the gym. And I'm like, communication is key, Right? That's why I ask clients. Another thing, like I know this is definitely going to go back towards those of you who are not trainers, but just pay attention here. Like I ask clients, what did you enjoy about the workout, about the program? What didn't you enjoy about it? Are there any things you like? Are there any things you dislike? Because when I know if someone's like, hey, every time I do this exercise and it fucking hurts my shoulder, well then guess what we're not going to do? Well, firstly, we're going to look at the shoulder issue, but we're also going to avoid exercise that hurt their shoulder. Or they're just like, "Mm, look, I just don't like this exercise. Because guess what? There's a fucking hundred ways to skin a cat, okay? It's the same thing of those of you who are like, oh, I want to lose weight. I'm going to start doing cardio. I'm going to start running. Do you like running? I fucking hate running. Holy shit. You're going to run to lose weight even though you hate it. Okay, how long can you keep that up for until you don't want to do it anymore? Think about it. Like, how long can you keep that up for? maybe 12 weeks, you lose all your weight, whatever. Then what do you do? I'm fucking sick of running. I'm not doing that anymore. Well, that wasn't successful, was it? Because you weren't adherent. 
you're adherent for a short amount of time. Anyone can kind of do something for a short amount of time. You can sit close to fire for a short amount of time before it starts to fucking burn and then you want to step away from it because you're like, this is just, I don't want to, I can't stand this anymore, you know? It's kind of a good analogy, actually. Like short term, we can, we can, uh, we can go without sleep for a short amount of time. Again, we can step next to fire for a short amount of time. We can embrace that burn to a degree, and then you're like, I can't take any more. I'm going to fucking scream. You know, my skin's going to melt, whatever it is. And then you step away, okay? The same thing. You can be like, I'm going to 12 week diet. Anyone can go to cut shit out for 12 weeks, but then guess what happens? At one point, there's a breaking point. Your body's like, I ain't doing this anymore, mate. Get me the fuck out of here. So you quit stuff. That's not what we want. We're here for long-term success, okay? And so with that, if someone's like, oh, I want to run to lose weight, whoa, well, okay, hang on. Before you start running, if, like, firstly, again, do you enjoy it? No, I hate it. All right, let's think of any other cardio that you like to do on a daily basis, okay? Now, stay, uh, you know, bear with me here. Don't even think about going to the gym. Think about other things. Because God forbid, you have to fucking, your coach is giving you 45 minutes on the Stairmaster. Like, just because your coach lives in the gym doesn't mean that you live in the gym, all right? They're like, okay, they like think about their gym or like, you know, whatever gym they go to. Uh, and they're like, okay, what do they got here? They got a treadmill. They've got a Stairmaster. They've got the cross trainer. You know, what else do gyms have? A stationary bike, uh, a rower, and maybe sometimes they might have... Um, that's probably basically it for the most part, you know? And then they give you like five modalities. And then for some reason, everyone fucking circle jerks a Stairmaster. If you're a female, you've most likely been told to do the fucking Stairmaster. Otherwise, it's like, uh, run on the treadmill. Okay, well, holy shit. How many other different type of cardiovascular exercises out, out there? Hundreds, okay? So it's like, all right, what do you enjoy? You know what? I could actually, really, like, I've got mountains around here. I really, I got a client who lived, used to live in the Blue Mountains. His cardio was walking with a weighted vest up in the mountains, doing incline walks. He's like, it's out of nature. I get to listen to nature. I can walk in my weighted vest, get my heart rate to about 130. It's great. I walk for about 45 minutes to an hour. He does that a few times a week. I'm like, sweet. Fantastic. I wish I had that. Another client, she loves swimming. She's like, oh, I'm so glad that the pool's open back up. I can go swimming again. Awesome. Go do swimming, you know? Another client recently, she was doing Peloton. You know that Peloton bike thing? My mum's got one of them. She loves it. So she was doing Peloton and she's like, hey, Tice, I'm kind of getting sick of just doing riding. And I know you've only given me three days of gym. So I'm doing these like Peloton boot camp things. Are these okay to do? Because they're going to, like, will they interrupt with my training? And she's like, you know, it's very lightweight. I think it's like two and a half kilo dumbbells and it's body weight stuff. And I was like, yeah, let me have a look. It's like body weight circuit. I was like, and she's like, I really enjoy it. I just want to make sure that, like, you know, can I do this instead of cycling? I was like, so you enjoy it? She's like, yep. Just get your heart rate up. Yep. It gets for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Are you sore afterwards? No, nah, it's good. I just, it's a good little sweat session. Okay. Sweet. Do that. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. Like, you know, I was really scared that I wasn't going to be able to do it um, just because, you know, people say it interrupts the gym and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh my God fucking god man the fitness industry like the people in here especially again it comes watered down from the fucking like it's just like coaches just water down their training and bodybuilding onto everyone else and think everyone else else does that and it's like you know there's like there's more than just the gym right like we have everything else that's out there and it's like anything you do that you can successfully stick to with your exercise is the most important thing so when it comes to, again, cardio, and you're thinking, hmm, I do want to do some cardio, if you do, whatever you think will be enjoyable, go and try it. I don't care what you think it is. Is it going to be swimming? Is it going to be on one of those, you know, uh, the, the, no, no a rowing machine, going actually rowing out on the fucking bay. Like there's like a dragon boats and there's rowing. Is it, um, a, you know, something else you want to try that you haven't tried before? A team sport again, you know? Is it going out for nature walks and hiking? It doesn't matter. It's like, just find something you enjoy. Because if I said, hey, go on the fucking Stairmaster for 45 minutes, every single day or every second day and every time you get on it, you want to shoot yourself. Like for me, man, I get on the assault bike and people think I'm fucked up for getting on the assault bike. That's my tolerable equipment that I like, you know? I would, if I get on the, um, the Stairmaster, I would do like three minutes and my knees are just fucking ruined. And I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm doing this for 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'm also like, why do people think they need to do the Stairmaster? What makes that more superior than another piece of exercise? And you know what? You, do you know what makes it more superior than any other exercise? Fucking nothing, actually. It doesn't. 
same as the cross trainer, same as the rower, same as anything. Everyone's like, oh, well, this piece of equipment, oh, this does it, oh, this. No, it, none of it, all right? And any cardio equipment does not grow a muscle at all, just so you know, okay? Oh, well, if you're on the Stairmaster, it grows your glutes. No, it fucking does not, all right? And no way in hell does it. If you're on the cross, I saw this the other day. If you're on the cross trainer and you put a band around your legs, it's going to work your glutes. No, it's not. I don't know how you think your glutes work, but it's not always in a fucking forwards and backwards action, by the way, with the band around your leg. Okay, so I'm like, what's going on here? Everyone, like, like, you want to grow something, you use weights for that. You use extra resistance, okay? There's a reason that runners aren't jacked with their quads. There's no resistance to a certain point. Your body weight's basically, your body weight and gravity is resistance. Why do people who lift weights have bigger quads than runners? Well, because there is a lot of more resistance, right? With cyclists, there are cyclists that have big quads. Why? Because they have resistance. You know, they're doing, uh, they're, they're, they're resisting cycling. They are cycling at a higher resistance. So there's a reason for that, okay? So resistance matters. But coming back to this whole adherence thing, you've got to find what you enjoy, okay? And like, it, you've got to really have this big picture approach, okay? Because health and fitness is for life. Health and fitness isn't this 12-week challenge, Health and fitness isn't this six-month thing. Health and fitness isn't a 12-month thing. Health and fitness is the rest of your life, man. Like, you, you realize that, right? Like, it's something you're gonna do. So it's like, if you're gonna do something and you think it's gonna be for the rest of your life, you might wanna pick something you enjoy. Because people make some decisions where it's like, hang on, are you thinking about this for the rest of your life? Like when we're younger, we make certain decisions where we don't really care. You know, you get a girlfriend and a, or a boyfriend or whatever you've got, you know, when you're younger and it's like, you're just having fun, you're just doing whatever. Like you're probably not thinking so far into the future, especially when you're, you're very young. Like you don't have that ability to think about, is this the person I'm going to be living with? What are their values? What are their morals? What are all these things, right? But as you get older, you start to think about that shit, Okay. And it's the same thing. It's like if you're thinking of a partner for life, if you're thinking of a career for life, right? Or at least in the next 10 years, let's say, because that's pretty long term. 10 years is pretty long term. You're thinking about a career or something. You're going to want to commit to it. It's like if you're like, this is going to be me for the next 10 years doing this and I fucking hate it. Like, are you going to want to stick to that for long? And that's actually why for me, I quit my apprenticeship uh, of my third year, okay? Three out of four years. People are like, oh, no, nah, you should have just got it, man. You should have just stuck out the extra year. And I'm like, w why? Well, it actually would have been two years, technically. And then I'm like, why the fuck would I want to do that? Oh, in case it's a fallback. I'm like, I hate this job so much that there's no chance I'd ever go back to it. Like, if I somehow, doing coaching now, if it all went to shit and I lost everything, you know what I wouldn't go back to? Being a truck mechanic. Wouldn't fucking in the slightest. So why, just because I'm halfway through, this is actually called the consistent uh, commitment consistency bias. It's like when you go to a shitty movie and you're halfway through a shitty movie and you're like, oh, I might as well just watch the end. Well, if it's a shitty movie and you're not enjoying it, you fucking leave the movie, right? You paid the money, okay? The ticket's gone. The money is gone. You do not have any commitment to be able to stay there longer. And if you're not enjoying it, get the fuck out of the movie. It's your time. You don't get time back. Would you rather sit through another sit through another, what, 60 to 90 minutes of something you hate? Because I wouldn't, all right? Everyone bangs on about, oh, Avatar, you know, it's so good. It wasn't as good as the first one, but, you know, if you're, and I'm like, I don't have an interest in that. Sitting down for three hours of my life to watch a movie that doesn't really interest me, I'm not going to fucking go to. As much as everyone bangs on about it, I didn't really like the first one, all right? I'm sorry if people are going to be upset about me about that, but, like, that's my personal preference, there's a reason I will not watch that. There's a reason I don't watch certain things because I'm not fucking wasting my time just to sit around and do something I don't enjoy, you know? Same thing as you. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to do the, I'm going to go on the Stairmaster again. Like 45 minutes of your day, let's say two to three times a week for the next 10 years doing something you don't enjoy because why? Do you think you have to? No. Are there other options you can do? Absolutely. What about doing something for 45 minutes, two to three times a week that you actually enjoy? God forbid you enjoy it, you know, for the next 10 years. Wouldn't that be a little bit easier to stick to, right? You know when you, you listen to a song, you don't like a song, you skip it? Imagine just having to listen to that song on repeat four times before you can go to another song. 
And you're like, I just fucking hate this song so much. And I'm like, why don't you just skip it? And you're like, you can do that? Yeah, you can just skip through the song. Why don't you just do another piece of cardio? You can do that? Yeah, you fucking can. You can do everything. Anything you want. Same thing with your training. If you don't want to go to the gym five days a week and do an upper body split, whatever the fuck it is, don't do that. All right? If you're like, you know what I love? I love... People who are like, I love their 45 classes. I love CrossFit. I love these things. If you love it, do that, man. Holy fuck. Like, I can't believe I'm making a podcast telling people the way to be successful with your health and fitness is to do things that you enjoy, okay? Now, let's just like think about enjoy, quote unquote, because there are gonna be times where you can't be fucked going to things, okay? But guess what? If there's something that you can't be fucked going to and you're like, should I, shouldn't I? If it's something that you enjoy more than something you hate, it's an easy decision. Like, I'm gonna go, most likely. And even if I say no, I'm gonna um, most likely wanna go back to that when, I, when I'm excited versus saying, I don't wanna go to the gym because I fucking hate it and I'm gonna skip it and not go anymore. Well, cool. You just fucking ruined that, haven't you? You know? And the reason I have to talk about this is again, because like we have this such a fucking dogmatic approach with the trainers and shit because it all comes down from the comp- comp- competition, I can't even say the word, competitors and all they know how to do is live in the fucking gym and do these certain things and they put it onto you like it's all watered down. You know, here's your 45 minutes of Stairmaster, here's your three days a week or here's your four days a week of training, all this shit and it's like, why? Okay? Like it, Imagine I'm like, you're like, hey, Tyce, I really like kettlebells. I'm like, uh, well, kettlebells aren't actually going to grow a huge amount of muscle. And you're like, yeah, but I don't really care about growing muscle. I just want to do my fitness. And I'm like, so you don't want to optimize your fucking quad and glute growth. You don't want to make sure that you're stimulating the fibers enough in order to help with hypertrophy. And they're like, what the fuck? I just want to swing some kettlebells. Like, I enjoy it. It's like, oh, okay. Like, who am, fuck, man, now, like, too bad you enjoy kettlebell swings and someone like me, who is such a fucking rigid, just not, you're only going to be doing the gym and bodybuilding and lifting weights that you can't swing kettlebells, you know, they're not optimal. Or, oh, you go to F45, mate, fucking hell, what's that going to do for you? Holy shit, man. Like, if you ever hear anyone shitting on any type of modality of exercise, just fucking unfollow them, okay? Because guess what? Exercise is fucking good for you, no matter what exercise you do, all right? If you like F45, go for it. If you enjoy CrossFit, you don't have to go to a normal gym. If you enjoy going to the gym, great. Like, whatever, man. Like, just find something you like. And if you're continuously doing something and you're feeling like you're losing motivation or you're hating it, you know what you can do? You can change it up, all right? I had one client. She's like, hey, Tyson, I just feel like I'm just not really feeling the gym anymore. Like, is there other stuff you can do for me? And I was like, yeah, what do you want to do? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Like, can you give me some circuit work? I was like, yeah. Like, what do you want to do, three days a week? She's like, yeah. I was like, okay. So I bang together a bit of circuit work for her, right? I was like, what do you got in the gym? I got ropes, you got TRX, you got kettlebells, you got a rower, you got a cross trainer, you got a bike. Uh, what else she had? She had a sled. Um, I think that was it. Like, I was like, what, you know, what things do we have kind of all in the same area? I was like, all right, sweet. So I just gave her circuit work. Cause like I'm like, what exercise modalities do you like? She's like, I like the rower, I like the um, I like the stationary bike, I like um, sprints on the treadmill. I was like, okay, cool. So I just literally threw together a whole bunch of circuit work: sled pushes, some rope slams, some TRX rows, some kettlebell swings. So guess what? She's enjoying the gym. She's like, oh, I like this type of stuff. Yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. Is that optimal for muscle growth? No. But guess what? Again, are you trying to optimize muscle growth, or are you trying to look a little bit better? feel better and healthier and just feel good because muscle growth optimization is a whole different category versus looking fitter, losing body weight, having quote unquote muscle tone and feeling good about yourself because you can do all that shit without having to slam yourself in the gym four to five times a week with just doing optimal training. I hope people understand that, okay? Like you don't have to do what every fucking cunt is doing in the gym. You don't have to just lift dumbbells and do machines if you don't want it. If you do, again, great. If you don't, find other things you enjoy doing. It's like we have this black and white line. If you're not, li- if you're not doing this optimal hypertrophy, you're not going to gain muscle. Bullshit. If you're doing exercise, there's going to be a little bit of muscle gain regardless. But guess what? You're in a diet. You're going to lose some body fat. You're going to look better overall. Okay? Then you might be like, you know what? I do want to actually go lift some more weights. All right, then go and do it. We can change things, guys. Like, there's nothing set in stone. Again, it comes back down to adherence. 
if this client said, I'm not really enjoying the gym anymore, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, what should I do? Well, what do I do? I give her two options. All right, I'll tell you what. You're either gonna stick to the program and just keep going and showing up, or I don't know what else I can do for you. I guess you'll have to go find someone else. All right, well, cool. So now she doesn't know what she's doing because I've given her two really shitty options. And she's like, oh, but like, I don't know what else to do. I'm like, sorry, I can't coach you because I only do this fucking type of training. You're not a coach, man. You're not, you're not a fucking coach, right? You're a one trick pony, basically. And again, people like you, you know, people say, oh, I wanna be a personal trainer. I love helping people. I, you love helping people? Well then fucking help people, okay? Not you love to do what you do and then you wanna force that onto other people because that's a different thing, all right? You love helping people, you help people figure out what they can do and that's gonna keep them consistent, all right? That's when it comes to your training. So anything you guys are thinking of, like what should I be doing with my training? How do I stay as adherent? Just find something you enjoy. There's gonna be something out there for everyone, okay? And if you're like, I still wanna emphasize though, lifting weights is still important, all right? Because it's really good for bone density, which is really important for your long-term health, okay? So even if like you find, so this is why it comes to tolerable too, okay? Like there are gonna be some things you have to do that are just gonna require a little bit of effort because, and like, you know, you may not love it, but you have to do it because Again, if your health is important, if you want to avoid um, bone breakages when you're older, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, you want to live longer because once you fall when you are over, old, over when you are older, once you have one fall, your ch- your chance of dying skyrockets. I think your chances of dying go up to sixty six percent within the next year once you fall and break a um, break a limb when you get older, especially if it's like a pelvis or if it's a femur, which are quite common. So this is why lifting weights are important. But let's say, all right, you have to go to the gym. You have to lift weights. You're going to do, what, two to three times a week. You don't have to do a bro split, all right? You don't have to squat. You don't have to deadlift. You don't have to bench press. God forbid these fucking people telling you these things. When I say you don't have to squat, you don't have to back squat or hack squat, okay? There's plenty of ways to squat. You can goblet squat. You can bench squat. You can, uh, what other type of squats are there? I'm trying to think of off the top of my head. You can single leg squat. Um, not a split squat, you can single leg squat, okay? You can squat with a, um, a Smith machine. Yeah, you can actually squat with a Smith machine. You just do more of a vertical angle. You can use a squat machine um, or a hack squat machine, sorry. Like there's plenty of ways that you can do a squatting movement because we still want to basically have that squatting movement. Same as a hinging movement. You don't just have to heavy deadlift off the floor, okay? You can dumbbell Romanian deadlift. You can barbell Romanian deadlift. You can work on other hinging motions like, oh fuck, I don't know. Um, let's say single leg Romanian deadlift. Let's say B stance Romanian deadlift, right? Find one that you can tolerate, all right? Oh, Tice, I just hate split squats. Ah, oh, well, you better be fucking split squatting. All right, do you want to do walking lunges? Okay. Would you want to try something like a front foot elevated split squat? Did you want to try a stationary lunge? Do you not like split squats because you can't balance? All right, let's hold on to a pole so you can get more balance and you feel more upright. Oh, I actually like this now. I just don't like the fact that I felt wobbly and I couldn't balance properly. Well, great, here's something to grab onto and now you can. All of a sudden, they like an exercise. Like, think outside the box if you're a fucking coach, right? But for you, the person listening, lifting weights is important, okay? You don't have to do, like I said, the basic shit, but you want to go and use you know, use stuff that you'll actually be able to do, all right? Ideally, you want to do some type of squatting motion, like I said. You want to do some type of hinging motion, like I said, picking something heavy up off the floor. The reason for this is because these things carry over to life, okay? You're going to be squatting, literally sitting onto a toilet seat and getting back up. You want to make sure you can do more than your body weight, okay? Because once you can't sit onto a toilet seat and stand up, you got a fucking problem. Like, that's a big issue, okay? If you need to grab something to pull yourself up, we got an issue here. If you, like, you know, again, same thing, picking something off the ground, if you can't pick something off of the ground with a relatively decent technique, you're going to fucking hurt yourself when it happens. So these things are carry over in life, all right? Also, strength, again, strengthening the bones, we want to make sure that we're going to prevent osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. And that's not to say machines are shit, you know? Do you want a leg press, right? Great, we can do stuff like that. Use machines. But just find stuff that you'll be able to stick to, okay? I, like... There's so many different variations of each exercise that you'll find something you can, again, tolerate. 
That's all you have to think about. What can I tolerate? Like, oh yeah, it kind of sucks, but like, okay, let's say out of your session, you have seven exercises, right? Six of them, you're like, yeah, these are fucking great. I do these all the time. And then number seven, you're like, ah, this just fucking sucks a bit. But it's like, all right, it's one. So it's like, again, you're not going to skip the gym because of that one exercise. You might have, a, you know, you might have more of a chance of skipping that one exercise, but you're still going to go to the gym to do the rest because you enjoy them. And that's what we want. We want enjoyment or, again, tolerability. Again, not everyone's going to love to do a specific form of cardio. I mean, if you add in cardio, it's like, what can you tolerate? Like, I don't fucking jack off about the assault bike. I'm not like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. I fucking love it. I'll never do anything else. Like, there are some days where I'm like, fuck's sake. I've got to get on this fucking assault bike. I've got to do this. And like, once I start to get it, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's okay. Like, sometimes I'm in a bit of motivation. But if it was to run on the treadmill, there is like an easy chance where I'm like, eh, I'm not doing that today. Like, not a chance in hell am I running on the treadmill. You know, it's an easy option for me to say no versus being like, Oh, all right, I'm not really feeling like it, but I'll go and do it because I know it makes me feel good and you know it's easy peasy type of thing. Like that's what we want to have the mentality for. And the same thing with your nutrition, right? Like going on a strict diet and cutting out a food group, I don't know how long people think they can sustain that for. I don't know anyone who's been keto for years, like actual just straight keto, right? What do they usually do? Oh yeah, I did keto for a while and then I wasn't able to stick to it. Or, oh, you know, I'm keto for this amount of time and then I jump into my carbs for this amount of time and then I come... It's like, man, like what? Fuck, are you just going to live without carbs for the rest of your life, you know? Are you going to live without, I don't know, certain... Oh, sugar, I'm going sugar-free for a month. And I'm like, why, though? Because what happens after the month? You start binging fucking sugar. Like, anything we just cut out and become extreme with, we never stick to. And again, show me in 12 months what you're going to be able to do. Like, oh man, I'm cutting out sugar for four weeks, let alone fucking 12 weeks. I'm cutting out sugar for four weeks. All right. Oh yeah, I've got no sugar cravings anymore. Oh, you got no sugar cravings anymore. That's fucking fantastic. Good to hear. So why did you start having sugar again then if you didn't have any sugar cravings? What made you go back to start fucking binging on sugar again? I thought you didn't have sugar cravings. They're gone. Magical. Fixed. But you went back and you started binging on sugar. What happened? Well, fucking guess what? Life happened, you know? You got the cravings again, most likely, because when you say don't think of a pink elephant, you think of a fucking pink elephant. You can't have pizza anymore. Okay, two days in. Oh my God, I want pizza. You haven't had pizza in three months. You know, the last time you ordered takeaway pizza was three months ago. And now that I told you you can't have pizza, two days later, all of a sudden, you want a fucking meat lover's pizza. Okay, well, that's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Funny that, when you're told you can't have something, you all of a sudden want it. Not everyone, you know, sometimes people can go without it, obviously, but it's like, why not just make something that's way more sustainable, okay? Now, dieting is not sustainable for the long term, all right? I'm not talking about dieting because you shouldn't be able to fucking sustain eating lower calories forever. But what I'm saying here is you don't do something that you can't stick to in the long term as in regards to, all right, I'm going to diet, I'm going to do keto, and then I'll go eating back to normal. Well, no, because you don't know how to eat normally, Right, like if you're going to diet, you should learn how to adjust your food intake and your portions and stuff like that. Because then when it comes back to living normally, you can adhere to living normally based on your new what physique, I guess you should say. Like, you know, you lose 10 kilos. All right, sweet. You learn what portion control is. You learn about food. You learn about all these things. How do you keep the 10 kilos off? You basically use the principles you've learned and you can just kind of increase the portion sizes and still follow the 80-20 approach, okay? Like no one loses 40 kilos on keto and then goes back to eating, uh, they lose 40 kilos on keto, I should say, sorry. They're keto for life or whatever it is. But like how many people do you see, again, keep falling off the keto bandwagon, keep going back to eating extra food. It's just not sustainable, all right? And like... What's the point in doing something if you can't sustain it? People who are vegans, if they, they're able to sustain it. That's fantastic. I don't see a lot of vegans being like, oh, I just had to have meat. I just had to have it. Like there are some people, you know, based on what their reasons are, oh, I could not be vegan. I just like animal products. There are some people, they can do that. And it's like, sweet, you found something that's adherable. Like, you know, a keto, um, uh, veganism, people can adhere to it, but not everyone can. Keto, some people can, but not everyone can. A large majority cannot. Because guess what? The body just needs carbohydrates, just so you know. 
Um, actually, you can just live without carbohydrates because the body doesn't need them. They're not essential. I don't know if any fucking person understands when they say, oh, carbohydrates aren't essential. If you give the body carbohydrates, guess what's going to suck up the carbohydrates real quickly? Your brain. Just so anyone knows. Like, we know, hands down, what uses blood glucose? What uses a, major, a good majority of blood glucose? And, uh, sorry, I shouldn't just say blood glucose. Glucose from food. Energy from food. Carbohydrates. What loves to use it? The brain. That's why when people go into ketosis, just so you guys know, I'm going on a bit of a side tangent here. The way the body breaks down, you know, we, you, you have ketones basically. And the body needs to convert this to have energy for the brain, okay? Because the brain's like, I still need to have some type of sugar, okay? So what the what the body does is it, it's like a secondary process. It's like a backup generator, basically, is what the body's doing. And people are like, oh yeah, well, the body can live on ketosis, and you know, the brain will be able to function, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, because you've given it a secondary option. Like, you've given, you, you know, the house has been turned off. There's a blackout. You've got a generator to keep you running in the meantime but you're not running off the proper power that it should be running off. That's that's all it is, you know? Like, we fucking... I don't know how else to explain to people. Like, oh, yeah, well, the body can run off it. You know, it's it's like, no, it's not. Like, fuck me dead. Like, it's not hard to think about this shit. And people love to bang on about it. It's like, just because people have a dogma and they can stick to it. The same thing with the how the fucking gym bros and stuff like that think you have to do this type of weight training, this type of exercise. The same people who have fallen these fucking camps with their nutrition, like, this is the only way to go. You've only got to do intermittent fasting. This was me. I was an intermittent faster. I fucking banged on to everyone. If you want to go into, you know, if you want to have mental clarity all day, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to do this, if you want to be optimal, blah, 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 you've got to do intermittent fasting. Like, what a fucking idiot I was trying to force every single person into a, squ- like a circle into a square hole, you know? Or is it a triangle into a circle? Whatever it's going to be, you know? The wrong fit. The wrong, the key doesn't fit the fucking lock, I should say. So find something that you're going to be able to adhere to. And if you start following a diet, like let's say, or a, a way of eating, let's say intermittent fasting, and it's like you're, you're a short amount of time in, and, you, and you're telling yourself, I only have to get through this and then I can go back to eating normally, whatever it's going to be. It's probably not going to set you up for success, Okay. If you're dieting and you're like, I only need to do a short term time, a short term time frame, I should say, I'm trying to fucking speak too fast. If you're dieting, you're like, I only need to do this for a short amount of time. That is correct. You only need to diet for a short amount of time. But the way you're eating, the food choices you're making for the most part, you know, is that going to be sustainable? Because if you're eating a breakfast, you fucking hate every single morning. You think you're going to keep eating that breakfast once this, techn- this diet is done with whatever fucking nutrition plan you've got given? No, you're going to look for another breakfast. And it's like, okay, what if we find you a breakfast that's going to keep you full, that's going to be sustainable for this period of time? Because God forbid we can't find a f- one or five breakfast ideas for you that you are actually going to enjoy. I had a client say to me yesterday, I'm a picky eater. I hate mushy things. I don't want to have weak bix. Um, uh, I don't want to have what you have for breakfast. I'm like, hey, okay, is that it? You just don't like mushy things? Yeah, sweet. So we're taking away the basic bitch breakfast of oats and wheat bix Cool. How many other options have I got for you? About fucking 40 different options for you. Okay. Do you like eggs? All right. Do you like other protein options for breakfast? Do you like smoothies? You know, do you, tell me, what else do you like? Oh, wow. Okay. Woof. Well, thank God we have more than fucking one breakfast solution. That's not just wheat bix So then this person's going to be more adherent because guess what? I figured out what's going to work for her. And the same thing for you. If you're like, like at the end of the day, if you're going to have to diet at some point, if you, this is what your goals are. So it's like, why don't you make the diet a little bit more enjoyable, something you can stick to, and you're still going to have to make some sacrifices, but it's like, what can you do that will increase your adherence with that, okay? Because as much as I shit on Biscoff and stuff for breakfast and stuff like that, if you can have a little bit of bre- uh, Biscoff and it keeps you satiated and it helps you stay on track, then have it, okay? But if you're having that meal that is making you crave after, then that ain't adherence either. That's not sustainable. If you're like, oh man, I need some extra sweetness in my diet. I need to be having this. Well, guess what? That's not sustainable because you're going to eventually fucking go over. So maybe, you know, that's why we say look for that 8 out of 10. You've got to find that balance with everything, you know, that adherence level. Because again, some days you're going to feel like shit and you just show up and you're like, well, guess what? This is tolerable. That's where we want to be. It's tolerable. I kind of enjoy it for the most part. 
because you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life. Right? So just, guys, don't fall into this whole bullshit that people put out there in the fitness industry that you have to do X, Y, Z. You have to do this. This is the only way. This is optimal. This is fucking blah, blah, blah. It ain't like that. Find your exercise side of things that you find adherent, that you'll adhere to, that is any type of exercise. Nutrition-wise, find something that's going to be tolerable in a diet, but you're still roughly going to get some enjoyment out of. But more importantly, find something where you can be like, you know what, I can find eating like this for the rest of your life. And I hope to fucking God that when I say that, the people who are like, I can't track for the rest of my life, fantastic, because you shouldn't be. And if anyone expects you to track for the rest of your life, Fucking sack them, okay? Because anyone who's going to track for the rest of their life is fucking neurotic. Plain and simple. If you can't track, if not tracking scares you, that's an issue. If feeling like this is going to control you for the rest of your life, that's an issue. If someone's forcing that onto you and they say this is all you have to do for the rest of your life, that's an issue, okay? Tracking is a tool. It is not something you have to do for the rest of your life, okay? If you're like, you know what? I can track for a little bit just so I get an understanding. If I'm like, hey, can you do this for the next three months? And it's going to be okay? Yes. If a client says to me, I don't want to fucking track at all, man. I hate tracking. What am I going to say? Well, you better track. All right. Well, there goes their adherence. Sorry, that was just one last point there. Jesus, the tracking side of things. So again, adherence is important. That's all I want you guys to understand. Find something you can stick to, you can tolerate, and think about, can I do this for the next X amount of years? Because health and fitness is not a fucking 12-week challenge. Think of it more about 12 years plus. Cool? Hope that was helpful. As always... Guys, I do want to ask, if you enjoy this, please give it a share. You know, it's easy. Just fucking click that button. It's like half a square with a little arrow in it. Click share, tag me, say you enjoy it, if you did enjoy it, because I'd like to help more people. Appreciate you guys so much for listening, and I'll speak to you next time.